Messianic Aryan Radio. Only one God. Hello, this is Eliseo Rodriguez, and this is the Aryan Orthodox Church. Um, Today we are going to be looking at, um, Bart Ehrman is an agnostic teacher who was learning under um, Metzger, a uh, textual critic and studier of manuscripts and all of that, very um, good teacher. Uh, about manuscripts and about doctrine and theology. And he has a uh, doctrine in theology, I believe, from Princeton University. And I've been coming to you with different verses where it talks about um, the, the understanding of the Jews having this monolatry, which is understanding that there is a one true almighty God, and then there was a divine being who was operating and revealing himself to um, to the world for God, and that he was the face of God and was being the representative of God, and that no one has ever really seen the Father Almighty. And the only way to see the Father is by seeing Jesus, because he's the image of God. And so what I want to do right now is just kind of give you a more support about what I'm telling you about how Judaism has this understanding of wisdom, the Memra, the Shalia, and how it coincides with Arianism. And so this is from How Jesus Became God by Professor Bart Ehrman. Uh, He was speaking um, at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and he is speaking on the subject of the Logos and what the Logos could be. To begin with, he started with talking about how it could be the Stoic reasoning and how it could be the logos of Stoicism. And now he's going to go into explaining about the Jewish view and how it could be what John is talking about. Now let's keep in mind that he is, for all intents and purposes, an agnostic, and he's trying to prove that Jesus is not God because he believes that Christianity is not the answer. So know that his his trajectory is in a more atheistic style. But because of that, uh, he does have very good credentials and he has um, really good understanding and he's has no you know, Trinitarian bias to prevent him from talking about how uh, and where these things come from. So <clears throat> I'm just going to let you listen in and uh, to what he says here. Hopefully this is loud enough um, for you to hear. I'm going to play it off of my phone. Have thought. More likely is another explanation, though, in which the term logos is to be connected with a different antecedent, different from Stoic philosophy, the antecedent being the Bible itself. In this view, the poem in the prologue begins by recalling the very beginning of the entire Bible. Here in the prologue, we hear... In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word created all things. Think about how the book of Genesis begins. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So it has the same phrase to start with, in the beginning. Here, though, it says that God created the heavens and earth, but how did he create the heavens and the earth? God said, let there be light, and there was light. 
in Genesis 1. In other words, God created the world by speaking a word. Is that what's being referred to here in John chapter 1? Just as God spoke a word at the beginning to create the world, so too the word was in the beginning as the one through whom God created the world. In this understanding, the word is a kind of divine hypostasis, as we saw in lecture four. In other words, a divine characteristic that has taken on its own existence as one that is God, since it's his characteristic, and yet as one that is separate from God, since it can exist apart from him. In this understanding, the word of God was what he spoke, but it had its own existence. It was with God in the very beginning, and it was itself God. It created the universe. The Word created the universe, and it provides life and light to humans. Eventually, though, it was rejected by those to whom it came. In an earlier lecture, we saw that wisdom was a hypostasis in Jewish thinking drawn from Proverbs chapter 8. Wisdom, Sophia in Greek... Uh, is was sometimes thought of in Jewish circles as being the one who created the universe. It is possible that this Logos teaching of John chapter 1 is alluding to the Sophia teaching of Proverbs chapter 8. Well, then why doesn't it simply use Sophia to explain this, this beginning in God's wisdom or in God's word? It, it may be because Sophia is a female name, Logos is a masculine noun, and Christ himself, of course, was a male. And so instead of talking about Sophia, it talked about Logos. In any event, this word that created all things that was... So <clears throat> he goes on and on, and it's a really interesting uh, teaching um, that, you know, I really don't like a lot of what he says because he's very, very um, atheistic in all that he's going through. But I've already started, and I've already gone through 16 chapters, and I've got... Um, nine more chapters to go of him speaking and each one is about 30 minutes so <clears throat> but I like that he's talking about right there about how the Jewish understanding of the wisdom and how the wisdom was used by God and the understanding the actually the very first part where they're talking about the logos and the speaking um, like he said was rejected and not accepted by by everyone because of uh, the just being having just an attribute, the wisdom though the wisdom teachings in Judaism, and is is what he was teaching in the second half there, and that's what I'm telling you is that it's Jewish understanding that the wisdom which is Jesus, and that divine being, and I showed you where it talks about it in the Targum, and it talks about it in the Bible, how wisdom is Jesus, and that Jesus is. Is, was created by the wise God. So it's not like Jesus is God's actual wisdom, but that God created this being who is the epitome of his wisdom, and that's why he's called the wisdom of God. Um, God has his own wisdom, but Jesus is called the wisdom of God because of how awesome uh, the purposes and the, the person of Christ is to the plan of God. So... I'm giving you all of this so that you can see that I'm not coming out of left field here. Um, scholars understand that the wisdom uh, theology and how that's Jewish and how it's ancient Jewish understanding. And then you look at Arianism and Arianism is saying that wisdom, that logo, that wisdom, that logos is Christ. And that's where we get the understanding. So then you understand when Justin Martyr says that there is another God. And when Philo says that that there is another divine being out there, this Logos, and how that's the Jewish understanding. So the Jews are seeing a consistent message before uh, Jesus comes into the world as a human. Uh, in the Targums, they talk about the wisdom being there instead of God being there, and how the word of the Lord came. And then you have... Um, you have Philo, who's talking about the Logos and has how it's being a being, uh, a God-like being, but it's a being that's doing the will of God. That's a, a, a non-Christian Jewish teacher, a leader, who is teaching something that looks very similar to Arianism during the time of Jesus, or a little bit before the time of Jesus. Then 
you have John the Apostle teaching about the Logos, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's consistent with the Targum, that's consistent with Philo, that's uh, consistent with John the, uh, John the Apostle and his teachings. Um, and also, obviously, Paul and talking about in the beginning uh, that he's the image of the invisible God and that all things were made through him and all of that is still the memra or the wisdom teaching in Judaism. And then you have Justin Martyr talking about there being another God that's that's um, obedient to the cause of all or the maker of all things. And then you have, as you keep going, you get eventually to Arianism where Arianism says that Jesus is uh, a divinity, but he's not the most high God and how he was used in that whole situation. So the places in, if you look at Justin, um, which is about 150 AD, when you look at Justin in the timeline, he's speaking about when he goes, when you go back to his teaching, when you talk about, uh, when you look at the, uh, the dialogue with Trifo and Justin Martyr, and then you look at the wisdom theology, the wisdom doctrine uh, or the memra doctrine and you look at where they see the wisdom and they and then where justin sees jesus and you see them both explained at the same places when you see the word of the lord coming to abraham or coming to whoever that it is consistently the same places where you find the wisdom theology in judaism before christ became a human and so because of that you see that it's the same story. On Christian, on the Christian side, Justin Martyr is telling the story of the wisdom doctrine of Judaism to the Jews, to Tri Trifo and his friends. And they understand what he's saying. And if Philo was standing there listening, Philo would totally get what Justin is saying. And then we, that's why we need to understand what Philo is, at, uh, what Justin is trying to tell Trifo. And how Philo is just affirming what Justin is saying, and the wisdom teaching is affirming what he's saying. And what when Justin says another God besides the maker of all things, he's not preaching Trinitarianism anymore. He's not teaching oneness. He's not teaching um, any of those things. He's teaching Arianism. He's not teaching teaching Binitarianism, which is two beings as one because he wouldn't say another God there. And so you have all of these different connections when Ignatius says that there is um, when, when people talking about the sun being uncreated and how that's a satanic doctrine um, that's against Trinitarianism and believing that Jesus was never born or always existent or God Almighty that's all together. So there's a consistent theme. And I just gave you that audio so that you can hear that that idea is not far-fetched. That is exactly what's happening. And so if you see the consistency of Judaism and the theory and the theology of Judaism and the wisdom the wisdom doctrine and the, or the Memra doctrine, and you move on and look at Philo and he's saying the same thing. And then you see John, he's saying the same thing. Then you see Justin Martyr saying the same thing. Then you see Origen saying the same thing. Then you see Arius saying the same thing. Vesuvius of, Necro, uh, of, of Necromedia or Caesarea, both of them saying the same thing. It's a consistent theme. And that's the way it's supposed to happen. There's not supposed to be this big radical change after Jesus comes. It's the same truth. It's the same religion. It's not supposed to take on a new form of God. It's not supposed to be a new being of God who's now a three-in-one God. That's not, it should be consistent from beginning to end. The way Moses saw God and, and, and that, that other being who he's, he saw face to face and today should be consistent. We should be consistent with Judaism and the view of God and uh, the Memra or the word of the Lord today. Okay, so um, hope you guys have a great week. Um, we are uh, the Aryan Orthodox Church. Please visit us on Facebook, the Aryan Orthodox Church group. Um, we also have a page that's generally for um, advertising and stuff like that, reaching out. So uh, visit us, talk to us, 
uh, and learn something. Have a good day.